The Miles Craft Circle Guide makes it easy to cut small and large circles from 1 and 1 half inch to 52 inches in diameter. The Miles Craft 1219 and 1269 Circle Guide Kits come with everything you'll need to cut your circles. Included in the packaging is a circle guide head, offset base, aluminum beam, small circle jig and slide, large circle slide, the center pivot, a pivot screw, the turn lock base plate, a small drill bit, router bit, turn lock bushing, and the centering pin and mounting screws. In the 1269 metric circle guide kit, you will get all the same components. However, your router bit will have an 8mm shank. You will receive two centering pins and three sets of mounting screws. To begin, remove the manufacturer's base plate from the router you intend to use with your circle guide kit. Insert the appropriate end of the centering pin into the router's collet following your manufacturer's instructions. Install the provided turn lock bushing into the base plate by twisting the bushing into the opening in the center of the turn lock base plate. While holding the base plate, with the recessed mounting slots facing away from the router, lower the base plate over the centering pin onto the base of the router. Rotate the base plate until the correct mounting slots line up with the base mounting screw holes. A minimum of two holes are required to attach the turn lock base plate. It may be necessary to enlarge one of the mounting slots to allow for correct centering and attachment of the turn lock base plate. There is a base plate compatibility chart included in your product manual to assist with mounting the turn lock base plate to your router. After you finish installing the turn lock base plate to your router, remove the turn lock bushing and centering pin. The bushing is only used for centering. For a cutting of large circles from 10 inches to 52 inches, attach the aluminum beam to the circle guide head. Be sure the end with the smallest measurement is inserted into the circle guide head. Ensure the beam is fully inserted into the circle guide head track and the flange bolt is in the T-slot track of the beam. Securely tighten the knob. Attach the large circle slide to the other end of the beam. The extension on the circle slide should be inserted so that it is underneath the beam if the diameter of your circle is from 10 inches to 42 inches. If the diameter of your circle is 42 inches to 52 inches, you will need to invert the large circle slide. The scales become irrelevant in this application and you will need to measure from the center of your circle to the inside or outside of your diameter mark. Do not tighten the knob at this time. You have now finished your complete assembly for large circle cutting. Now mark the center point of your circle and then mark at least one point on your circle diameter. Using the provided drill bit, pre-drill a hole for the pivot screw on your center point. Then place the center pivot over that hole and secure it tightly with the pivot screw. Place the large circle slide onto the center pivot and push down gently to be sure it's fully engaged. Insert the provided quarter inch straight bit into your router's collet and secure it as directed by the router's manufacturer. With the turn lock base plate already attached to your router, line up all three arrows on the base plate with the arrows on the circle guide head. Drop the base plate in at the desired position and turn it clockwise until it locks into place. To remove the base plate, simply pull back on the thumb lever and turn counterclockwise. You have now completed the setup for cutting large circles. You will notice that on both sides of the large circle slide, there's an I and O for the inside and outside diameter readouts for both imperial and metric diameters. The scales on the aluminum beam show the diameter of the circle to be cut when using a quarter inch router bit. To cut a circle using the inside diameter readout, you will need to slide the large circle slide to your desired inside diameter. In this example, I've chosen a 14 inch diameter. Your router bit should be positioned on the inside mark you made for your diameter, but be sure it is still touching your mark. Tighten the knob on your large circle slide. To cut a circle using the outside diameter readout, you will need to slide the large circle slide to your desired outside diameter. In this example, I've chosen a 16 inch diameter. Your router bit should be positioned on the outside of the mark you made for your diameter, but be sure it is still touching your mark. Tighten the knob on your large circle slide. Set the depth of your router bit and you are now ready to make your first pass. In this example, I'm cutting a circle with an outside diameter of 16 inches. Be sure to make one complete pass on your circle before adjusting the depth again. Each pass should be a quarter inch to 5 sixteenths of an inch deep until your desired depth is reached. For the cutting of small circles from 1 and 1 half inch to 12 inches, attach the small circle jig to the circle guide head. Be sure the small circle slide is pointing towards the pivot hole on the small circle jig. Ensure the jig is fully inserted into the circle guide head track and the flange bolt 
is in the track on top of the slide. Securely tighten the knob on the circle guide head. Mark the center point of your circle and then mark at least one point on the circle diameter. Using the provided drill bit, pre-drill a hole for the pivot screw on your center point. Using the center pivot hole on your small circle jig, screw the jig to your workpiece. Insert the provided quarter inch straight bit into your router's collet and secure it as directed by the router's manufacturer. With the turn lock base plate already attached to your router, line up all three arrows on the base plate with the arrows on the circle guide head. Drop the base plate in at the desired position and turn clockwise until it locks into place. To remove the base plate, simply pull back on the thumb lever and turn counterclockwise. You have now completed the setup for cutting small circles. You will notice that on both sides of the small circle slide, there's an I and O for the inside and outside diameter readouts for both imperial and metric diameters. The scales on the small circle jig show the diameter of the circle to be cut when using a quarter inch router bit. To cut a circle using the inside diameter readout, you will need to slide the small circle slide to your desired inside diameter. In this example, I've chosen a four inch diameter. Your router bit should be positioned on the inside of the mark you made for your diameter but be sure it is still touching your mark. Tighten the knob on your small circle slide. Set the depth of your router bit and you are now ready to make your first pass. Be sure to make one complete pass on your circle before adjusting the depth again. Each pass should be a quarter inch to 5 16 of an inch deep until your desired depth is reached. In this example, I am cutting an inside circle with a 4 inch diameter. To cut a circle using the outside diameter readout, you will need to slide the small circle slide to your desired outside diameter. In this example, I've chosen a 5.5 inch diameter. Your router bit should be positioned on the outside of the mark you made for your diameter, but be sure it is still touching your mark. Tighten the knob on your small circle slide. Set the depth of your router bit and you are now ready to make your first pass. Be sure to make one complete pass on your circle before adjusting the depth again. Each pass should be a quarter inch to 5 16 of an inch deep until your desired depth is reached. The Milescraft 1219 and 1269 circle guide kits are a simple and easy way to cut accurate circles from 1 and 1 half inch to 52 inches. You can create anything from tabletops, speaker boxes, coasters, and much more. As an included bonus, you also receive the offset base plate to allow your maximum support when finishing your edges. With the turn lock base plate already attached to your router, simply attach your router to the offset base by lining up the three arrows and turning clockwise. You are now ready to route. For finishing your inside edges, you're going to want to route in a clockwise motion. For finishing your outside edges, you're going to want to route in a counterclockwise motion. When routing, be sure to always keep a firm grip on your router. Now you can finish off that masterpiece that you've created while using a handheld router. Milescraft always the better idea.